Hello all my beautiful sisters from those other misters. Welcome back to my channel. It is time for uh, monitoring my beauty purchases and a was that haul worth it update. So monitoring my beauty purchases is where I talk about the beauty products that I purchased in the last month and why I chose to make those purchases. And was that haul worth it is a recap on the items that I purchased in the same month, one year prior. So let's start with what I purchased this month. I did actually buy two things. Um, one thing I've had for a little while, but only just recently started playing with it uh, because I was doing, what was I doing? I had the mm, lethal, the lethal uh, collection that I was testing out. And I've only just recently dug into this guy from Natasha Denona. It is the Glam Face Palette. I am wearing it today and I really like it. This is the sort of thing that I like to wear on a daily basis. So the palette consists of three matte eyeshadows and two really beautiful shimmery sparkly eyeshadows. There is a cream blush and then a powder highlight. Um, now I wasn't, this really wasn't on my radar. Here comes a doggo. Hi the baby. <laughs> I'm excited. Oh my god. Guys, she's crazy. Um, so this palette, I remember when this released, I'm pretty sure we talked about it on Beauty News, it's been out for a long time. Um, I liked it, but I believe I was like, no, no, don't need it, so I'm not going to buy it. Um, but Madeline purchased it, so I got to see it in the flesh. And often seeing things in the flesh, look at these, so amazing. Um, often seeing things in the flesh make me see how it would look on you know or I, it helps me to imagine how it would look on myself and whether it would be something that I can use in my like everyday makeup stash um what I ugh, wrong finger what I particularly liked about this palette was the mattes felt really balanced to me so there's like you know, a light, a medium, and then a deeper tone, but the deeper tone is not so dark that I can't just sort of use it on its own, apply it lightly and smoke it out. Um, and the metallic shades are like right up my alley. This is the one that I'm wearing on my eyelids today. It's quite light. Um, what's interesting about this, um, I put this on my eyes for the first time today. Last time I used this shade, which I also really love. Um, this shade actually, it comes up like a little bit, like there's really, really subtle hints of blue and pale green in the reflect. Um, I can't see it at all when I swatch it on my hand, but when I swatched it or when I applied it to my eye, I was like, Wait, is there blue in that? I think there's blue in that. It's got a really beautiful cool tone to it, and I think it's stunning. Um, I'm wearing these two mattes. So this one is like in my crease, and this one is in my outer corner. I love it. This is a sort of like everyday eyeshadows that I like to wear on my eyes. Um, the blush I really enjoy as well. I am wearing it today. I'm wearing it quite lightly though. Um, so it doesn't show up all that well on camera, but I find the color to be quite flattering on me. Um, just watch it. I do think that it looks a little bit, um, maybe a little bit more pink than what I would usually go for, but it still works. Um, I feel like it looks very nude there, but we've discussed this before. Um, I've got olive undertones, so I do pull a lot of like pink tones out of blush. They're not my favorite, but I find this one to be quite flattering, especially when I wear it lightly. Also, it's not, it's not like a straight up cream blush. It's kind of like one of those cream to powder formulas and it's quite firm in the pan so for me to apply it really lightly it's very easy to do 
Uh, the highlighter is also really pretty. I think it, it doesn't look like all that much when you swatch it. Uh, you can see it's extremely close to my skin tone, but potentially <laughs> you can see uh, just how light reflective that is on my face. I would say it is a very, very um, intense highlighter, but... Uh, I would say the downside to it, and look, you guys know I do like an intense highlighter. Um, maybe you'll be able to pick up on it. I am having some skin textural issues at the moment, and this, obviously, the formula does. I mean, highlighters, you know, they highlight things, so it's going to highlight um, if your texture isn't all that great, but uh, this one does it with a vengeance. My skin texture will improve. I've gone back to using um, acids. I couldn't do it because I'd had PDO mono threads done. So I was, you know, being really gentle with my skin. But I'm on the road to recovery. So um, I'm back into the, you know, the more active skincare. I love this palette though. I am really glad that I got it. And I feel like this is kind of like the perfect travel palette because this is what I like to wear on a daily basis. If I want to go really subtle, I could just pop this shade um, in my crease and then one of the shimmers over my lid. I, I should point out the shimmers are in no way subtle. They are very sparkly, but for me, that's kind of like an everyday thing. I really enjoy that. Um, you could also like, I could do just a simple matte eye. Um, I can you know, skip the blush and just go with the highlighter. I certainly don't have to apply the highlighter as heavily as I have today. Uh, you can definitely be more subtle with it. I think the only thing I would have loved to have seen slightly different is if they had made these three squares and put a bronzer in there. That would have been absolute perfection. This palette would be a one and done and I would probably throw out the rest of my makeup collection. Not really, but you kind of get my, my drift. Um, I really love this. It's been fantastic. The last item I purchased this month, I kind of purchased on a whim. However, I've had it in the past, very long time ago, and I thought, you know what? I want to give it a go again. It is the K18 Biomimetic Hair Science uh, Leave-In Molecular Repair Hair Mask. Now, I use this product years and years and years ago. We're going back to when I was blonde, bleach blonde. Um, this was in like, uh, I don't even know if we were doing beauty news at this time. Uh, or maybe we just started beauty news. So we're going back a long, long time. Um, and it was actually called something different. It was called the K Hair Pep uh, Treatment. And they had, I believe they had three products that they promoted. I went to a PR event and they gave us three products. There was a spray-in product, there was this product that was actually in a tub, and then there was uh, a version of this but for finer hair. Now it looks like they have whittled down their range and they've just kept this product, which I believe they, they must consider it their hero product, and I have to agree. Um, now what this does is it it's supposed to help repair um, the bonds of damaged hair. So whether it be like bleach damage, heat damage, all that stuff. Now, I back when I first used this, um, I felt like this was the hero product. The, um, the Back when I tried it, this was the leave-in treatment for thicker hair. And I found that just, you know, using a very small amount of it got me fantastic results. The one for thinner hair was also just as good um, and the spray-in was also a fantastic product. But I can understand why this has been held onto as like their hero product and they, they moved on the other things. Now, what this did for me back in the day was um, if you've ever had bleached hair, um, you might know that like the ends of your hair can get really like crispy and they like stand up on edge like this and they never feel soft and they're always tangled and they snap easily and all that jazz. Now, I was having um, a tame treatment when I was uh, getting my hair colored um, for quite a few years now and um, that kind of helps to seal the hair cuticle, keep everything like smooth and shiny, prevent breakage, um, 
and like maintain softness and stuff like that. Now, the downside to having a tame is that you lose a lot of body in your hair and also um, my hair doesn't hold any sort of curl. Um, so I've opted to stop doing tames for a while just to see how I go with it. If I feel like I need to go back to it, I might do that. Um, but for now, I'm going to like try out some other things. I am still, however, having my hair coloured where we've got transition hair going on at the moment. Um, I go in early next month for new colour, something different. Uh, so anyway, that's where this guy comes in. So that's a long-winded story to get to why I purchased this. Um, I remembered how much I loved it. I'd seen it promoted on, I don't know, something. Maybe on Instagram, maybe on Facebook. Uh, somewhere I'd seen it promoted and I was like, you know what? I kind of want to give this a go again. And that was a few months ago that I, I saw that ad. And the other night I was... Um, sitting on my laptop and you know as you do browsing stuff and I was like oh my god I should see if I can find this product and buy it um, and I found it and I bought it and I used it last night and I am not even remotely disappointed that I picked this up um, I noticed a difference in my hair after the first use so I'm I'm really really excited to continue playing with this and uh, see where my hair goes. So those are my purchases for June of 2022. Um, I do still want the Too Faced Sunset Stripped palette, is that what it's called? Um, and I actually I got a message on Instagram Let's do a little shout out. Adele, you beautiful human you. Thank you so much for letting me know that it is available online. Um, I haven't ordered it yet. I kind of want to go in store and look at it. But also I don't really want to go in store. I don't know. I probably will over... I don't... See, I'm not going to be able to go until next week. And I'm scared that by then it's going to sell out. So maybe I should just order it online. I don't know. I don't want to miss out on it. I've got FOMO for that palette. And I've been waiting for it for so long. But um, also, you know, I'm trying to make smart purchasing decisions. And, and I feel like I shouldn't buy an eyeshadow palette online when I can go and swatch it in store. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts, guys. Uh, let's move on to the stuff that I purchased in June of 2021. God, that feels like a lifetime ago. I, I, wonder, I wonder what I was doing back then. I can't even remember. Let's start with Sonia G brushes, all of which are dirty. I had to literally dig these out of... Um, my dirty makeup brush bucket and then that made me go fuck I really need to like set aside a whole day to wash my brushes um not really it's not that bad <laughs> but I do I've got a lot to clean so I have the classic base here uh the mini base and then the soft concealer so these brushes are all designed to be multifunctional with creams and powders, liquids, creams and powders. And that is why I purchased them. Um, I really like Sonia G brushes. I have, um, uh, I've got two others here. So here we go. Here's one. I have the Designer Pro, which is just like a fantastic sort of do whatever you need brush. I like to use this one for highlighting and under eye um, setting. Could also use it for powder blush or that jazz. Um, and I have the Worker 3. Now the Worker 3 is, I believe, and Oh, Madeline, if you're watching this, feel free to chip in. Um, is it the equivalent of the Worker 2, but smaller? Oh, God, I need to I need to Google it. Yes, I am correct. It is a smaller version of the Worker 2. Now, Madeline actually purchased me this brush um, oh, ages ago. Was it last year? Probably the year before, actually. Maybe even the year before that. I don't know. Time. It's moving so quickly. Um, so I had wanted the Worker 2 brush for a really long time, but it was constantly out of stock because it's a fantastic brush. Madeline purchased me this one, which I was just like fucking flabbergasted. Um, and I love it. I love it. Now, 
this is um, a goat hair brush typically when you have um, brushes that are designed specifically to be used with powders liquids and creams they're a blend of synthetic fibers and natural hair fibers but this is um, according to the website that it, it's just um, goat hair and it feels like it but this brush gave me confidence to then go on and purchase more of the Sonia G brushes. Now these ones differ from the Worker 3 in the fact that they actually are a blend of goat and synthetics and these are specifically designed for creams and liquids. You can use them for powders as well if you want to but I would say that the like the structure of the brush depending on the type of makeup application that you're going for these probably would just simply be better for creams and liquids and that is how I use them exclusively and it is what makes me love them so much. Now I believe they released a collection of five of these brushes. I picked up the three that I felt would be um, best suited to like you know how I apply my makeup, the types of products I use, my face shape and size and all that jazz. You might be able to tell from the fact that they are dirty, that they are constantly in use and I really really love them. Typically when you're using um, brushes to apply cream products you do get a bit of a heavier application but I feel like um, the the structure of these brushes especially these two oh did I just oh no let's not get makeup from the brush on my top um these two typically when you have brushes like these they're really really densely packed um and that means they pick up a lot of product and they like paint product on your face these aren't as densely packed they have a really like a, a lot of movement in the tips of the bristles which allows them to like spread across your face better and they don't instead of painting product on they kind of buff it and push it into the skin which gives like a much nicer natural finish um, in my opinion sure you can apply makeup really heavy with these if that's what you're going for but it's not really my jam these days um, so I appreciate that these sort of give you the flexibility to do what you want with them okay let's move on to Marc Jacobs because I panic purchased some items from Marc Jacobs last year because the future of the brand was uncertain I'm going to talk about the products and then I'm going to talk about my feelings about what's going on with Marc Jacobs because like I'm, I'm really upset. Um, I picked up two fine liners and a highliner. Now the highliner I got in blacker. This is just like a black pencil gel liner. I love this formula. This and NARS in Via Veneto are like my ride or die black gel eye pencils. Once they set, they don't move. I can put these in my tight line, in my waterline, and they don't budge, and I love them. And I didn't have one, so I picked one up. I don't even know if I've used it since. Maybe once or twice, I don't know. Um, I did pick up two of their fine liners as well, which is the same formula as a highliner. Uh, the only difference is these are micro pencils. So I picked up, uh, which one's this? Grapevine, which is a beautiful purple shade and I also picked up uh, blacker which is you know it's black um, and I like these mostly I like these for doing like a little smoky wing um, but I don't really use them for that purpose all that much anymore which is, I don't know in hindsight I probably could have skipped the highliners but also I can't really say that I'm sad that I picked them up because I don't know if Marc Jacobs is ever coming back. Not the Marc Jacobs we knew at least. Uh, I also picked up Tantastic. This is the bronzer which good gold. It's like fucking the size of my head. Um, this will last me a lifetime which is great. It's 25 grams of beautiful perfect shade bronzer for me. Um, no regrets. I honestly, I don't even, I don't care. I could have two of them and not be sad about it. I picked up, uh, one of the, oh, what are these called again? Do we have a name? Any name? 
here we go. Uh, it is the Enamored Hydrating Lip Gloss Stick in Mocha Chocolate Latte. So this is like the nude shade. And I wanted this for so freaking long. Every time I go to Sephora, I would look for this. I could never find it. It was always out of stock. They had it on their website. I don't regret this at all. It is literally like a lip gloss in a stick with that sort of sheer nudie shade. I love it. It's beautiful. I, again, I kind of wish I had another one of these because I don't think we're ever going to see them again. Um, and I picked up this. This was a terrific, iconic, um, multi-finish eye palette. Now, I purchased this one because it was probably the most red in their range. You guys know I love a red eyeshadow. I would definitely say that this isn't very red. I would say it's a bit more, like, it's berry toned, so sort of like pinky purple rather than, like, true, true reds. But in saying that, I do really like all of the shades. It is not my, oh, not my favorite formula. It's not bad. But it's not something where I'd be like, got to catch them all. Um, it's, it's usable and it's nice, but I've tried better. That's all I can really say. What I do love about these palettes, though, is that the pans are small. They're not the standard size eyeshadows. I love that because I'm never fucking hitting pan on any eyeshadows like this. Probably ever in my life ever again. Um, so I do like the sort of compact, small, um, you know, small pans. It, it just feels better for me to have stuff like this in my collection. So I don't really regret buying that. However, uh, based on like how often I reach for it and how interested I am in using it, the fact that it's not an everyday palette for me, like I wouldn't want to take this away because like on a holiday because I don't want to be like stuck with just these colors forever whereas like the Natasha Denona palette that I showed you like I'm happy to be stuck with those colors for a month or fucking six weeks if that's how long I'm going to be away for that's fine but I don't want to be stuck with this for that long so it's kind of like I'm trying to make my eyeshadow palette purchases really smart is it something i'm gonna wear, want to wear every day for a really long time if it is then that's a good purchase if it's not then it's not a smart purchase so this wasn't my finest purchasing moment but also i'm kind of glad that i bought it because again i don't think we're ever going to see this from mark jacobs again i don't even know if we're going to ever see mark jacobs again so mark jacobs beauty was manufactured by kendo who owns Sephora um, and that's why Marc Jacobs was only sold in Sephora and they did have an online website as well now um, their contract so Marc Jacobs contract with Kendo expired in 2021 so that explains why everything went on sale and they cleared out the goods now whether Marc Jacobs decides to renew their contract I don't know if that's going to happen. I feel like we saw a lot of sales with Marc Jacobs in the lead up to their contract expiring. So potentially sales weren't as good as Kendo would want them to be or Marc Jacobs would want them to be. Um, and in terms of like Marc Jacobs deciding to bring out their own beauty brand, that is completely possible. If the brand was actually doing quite well and Marc Jacobs is like, well, we actually want to go out on our own, um, that doesn't necessarily mean that we are going to see the same products from Marc Jacobs because we don't know if Marc Jacobs owns the formulas that Kendo created for their products or if Kendo still owns them. So Marc Jacobs may come back, Marc Jacobs Beauty, um, but whether it will be what we know and love from Marc Jacobs that will remain to be seen it could be a brand that is like standalone on its own manufactured um through another company uh on behalf of Marc Jacobs so we might not see the beautiful amazing formulas that we all know and love I don't know it's a mystery it is still to be determined there was something else that I purchased from Marc Jacobs. It was the, I think it was Double Shot Foundations. I purchased two of them. I'm 
pretty sure I decluttered both of them. I haven't been able to find them. I remember them being a little bit drying on my skin. Not just not right for me. Um, I'm I'm not really into matte foundations these days. I kind of took a gamble on that product because they said it could be used as a foundation or a concealer and yes it could. It was uh, quite high coverage um, and I was hoping that like the formula would be okay for me but it wasn't so I'm pretty sure I got rid of both of them. Okay let's move on to Lisa Eldridge. Uh, last year was my first foray into Lisa Eldridge beauty and I picked up a few things. Um, I picked up the Elevated Glow uh, like Illuminating Liquid. This is in Crystal Nebula and I look I purchased this because I am into liquids and creams um, and this looked like it was kind of right up my alley. So it can be used as a liquid highlighter, you can use it as a base under foundation, you can mix it in with other products, you can pop it on your body, you can do whatever you want with it, just don't eat it. It's really, really gorgeous, very flattering on the skin, it's a good colour for me, um, I, I really enjoy it. I do have it in my project pan at the moment, and I've not been using it because I've been testing out other highlighters, so you know, there's that. Another item that I picked up was the Enlivening Blush in Pink soap. Now my issue with this product, I hate the packaging so much. It is so hard to get. It's like squeezing a brick. I swear it's exhausting. Um, but the formula is really nice. It's kind of like a creamy mousse sort of. Um, it you know, it blends over the skin really easily. It's nice and smooth. Um, it dries down to, I would say, kind of demi-matte. Um, so it's not completely like flat color. It still has a little bit of that like natural sort of hydrated skin radiance that you would want from like a natural looking blush, uh, which I really like, but also it's not like sticky or anything. So your hair is not going to stick to it. It's not going to move around your face. Um, I would say that the color is not absolutely perfect for me but it is very very wearable um i would say if it had a little bit more like yellow peachy like yellow and orange tones to it it would be a bit more flattering on me but in saying that i'm being super super picky about the color the color still looks good on my skin this is the sort of pink that i can wear i think if lisa eldridge bought out more colors and changed the packaging i would be very very likely to buy another one to try. Um, I do use this one but the packaging turns me off. The packaging is like it's super annoying. I, I can't I can't tell a lie. I do not like the packaging. Uh, I also picked up two lip glosses from Lisa Eldridge. Now I grabbed Affair and Muse. So Affair is the nude and Muse is the mauve. Um, I don't love this packaging. I'm just going to say, can you guys see like how goopy this is? Focus. Not on my face. There we go. She gets really goopy um, and it's kind of chunky. Not my fave. Um, and also like when you pull the wand out, it's a little bit stringy. I would say that like they don't really feel sticky on the lips. Um, they're just, like, they feel smooth and they're nice and hydrating. I just, I don't know, the I, messy packaging. Like the, the packaging is so chunky, monkey, and messy. Um, I would consider buying more of these if they were maybe in, like, thinner wands. Because these are just sort of, I don't know, they look clunky to me. Um, but I do like these. I haven't used them all that much if you've been following along I've been working on my mini like project lip nightmare um, <laughs> and just really not making progress with it um, and that means the whole rest of my collection is just like not getting used at all so it's a problem but it it's it is what it is I'm working on it I made I made steps to fix my issues. Um, okay, so 
Lisa Eldridge stuff I really enjoy. Um, I look, I would buy more from Lisa Eldridge. I would, based on my experience with her products, I think they're really nice. There are some small things that I'm fussy about, like the packaging. Um, but the reason why I'm fussy about those things is because they are very expensive products. You know, you buy them in um, British pounds, and by the time you convert them to Australian dollars, it's like oof. So uh, yeah, I am. I'm picky about those things. I definitely don't mind buying luxury products. I've spoken about a lot of really fucking expensive products in this video. Um, I have no issue with that. In fact, I, I guess I would say I even lean more towards those uh, higher end brands because I'm kind of like a, I don't know, less is more and quality over quantity kind of girl these days. Um, but in saying that, I'm fussy about shit like packaging. So, you know, I'm just being uh, discerning about things that I spend my money on. Here comes a doggo for the 5,000th time. Hi, to be. Oh, wow. Okay, let's move on to my last items. This video has been long. These are also from Natasha Denona. They are the I Need a Nude Lip Crayons, and I picked these up in two shades. I picked up Ilona, which I think is a movie shade. Is it a movie nude? Yes, Movi Nude. Um, oh, not that you can really tell. Uh, and I picked up Noah. You might notice the, the color difference uh, when I, I've got them like next to each other. There we go. Oh, they look identical, don't they? Um, so this is Alona and this is Noah. Um, this one does have a little bit more of like those pinky purpley tones, which you might be able to tell. And uh, Noah is more of like a caramel nude shade. Um, these are beautiful lip liners. Um, I would say these are sort of on par with the ColourPop formula in how smooth and glidey they are. At least the like the nude shades that I've used from ColourPop in terms of their lip liners. But these have longevity that is like outstanding compared to ColourPop. But if you can't afford Natasha Denona and you want a comparable um, alternative I would consider ColourPop, especially if you live in the States and you can get like free shipping for only spending a small amount of money. Um, because the ColourPop ones, they do have good longevity, but the Natasha Denona ones uh, knock them out of the park. These are fantastic. Really, really beautiful um, lip liners. I don't regret purchasing these at all, but I would admit that I uh, have too many lip liners and I didn't need to buy these at the time, but I did. It's done. I own them. Um, I would also say a year on, the consistency hasn't changed either, which is really nice. Um, I'm always concerned about lip liners, especially in this sort of really rich, creamy sort of gel glide-on formula that they might uh, dry up and get a bit crumbly. Hasn't happened. They, uh, they have held up really, really well. So these guys are gorgeous. I would actually really like to put one of these in my project pan, not necessarily to pan it, but just to get like, you know, a good chunk of use out of it. But I'm still working on my uh, ColourPop ones, so, you know, there's that. Okay, this video was supposed to be short, and uh, now it's probably a fucking feature-length film, and I've got to go and edit it and get it up for you guys. So, I'm going to wrap it up there. I would say, overall, um, I don't regret any of my purchases from June of 2021. I feel like... Um, Everything I purchased turned out to be really functional or, you know, potentially I will never be able to buy them again. So they've become a little bit of a treasure in my collection um, or it's come from brands that I just really wanted to try products from for myself and see what I thought of them. So um, I, I think it was it was a big month of purchases in June of uh, 2021, but I think all purchases worked out well. Other than the Marc Jacobs uh, foundations, which I did declutter, but you know, you can't win them all and I got them 50% off. So um, I'm, I'm not gonna complain about that not working out for me. <laughs> 
sometimes things just don't work. So I'm gonna wrap it up there guys. Feel free to let me know uh, anything you want down in the comments. Did you pick up any of the Lisa Eldridge stuff and you got feelings one year later? Let me know what you think. Or if you have any more info on the Marc Jacobs beauty situation. And if you're a Sonia G brush lover like I am, let me know what your favorite cuts are because I am feeling the burn of uh, brush buying. It is there. The flame is growing by the day. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.